I am Lima Pasha, an executive wellness coach and business consultant. I help women business owners and professionals to manifest wellness so they can save her life, increase income, and go from drain to reclaimed. So um, I'm going to share my screen right now and tell you a little bit more about executive wellness webinar. We are connecting and collaborating and unmasking the secrets to your well-being as a woman in leadership. You will explore some practical tips that you can apply right away and continue for a lifetime. So uh, that's one of the things that I'm all about is practical application. If anyone knows me, um, I don't like to just, you know, sit idly by and just listen to something that is not going to be applicable. I know sometimes you can put things into practice later on down the road, but the sooner you start, the sooner it begins to imprint. Today, the objectives are going to be to teach you to manifest your well-being, transform leadership communication, minimize burnout, and elevate your leadership through mindfulness. Manifesting wellness is a state of well-being experienced through a journey. And this is something that I coined when I was um, doing the 21-day detox and just kind of really focused. Um, I was able to sit down and write most of my book. And what came to me as the pillars of manifesting wellness were gratitude, visualization, community, mindfulness, wound wellness, and aligning your peace, power, and purpose. So those are the principles that I help clients achieve um, in their efforts to manifest wellness. These are some things that I toiled with when I was experiencing um, challenges with wound wellness, such as fibroids. Um, and the gratitude number one is what really catapults us to help us have a great day, to just think about everything that you're grateful for before you even jump out of bed, before you answer your phone, your text messages, um, before you have any fleeting thoughts, just think about what you're grateful for. Um, and that helps you get up on the right side of the bed. I know for me, it makes such a huge difference. If I get up and look at my cell phone and text messages, and if it's something that um, I don't like, it can set the tone for the rest of the day. So it's our responsibility to set our tones for the day by first starting out with that gratitude. And then next is the visualization. The visualization is where you're able to close your eyes and envision not only what your day could be like, but um, envision what your highest desires are and envision them as if they have already been achieved. Envision them with all of your senses. Community is number three. Community is what we're building right now. So let me tell you briefly um, about myself. I specialize in teaching women business owners and professionals how to cultivate their well-being and optimize leadership communication skills through mindfulness. I hold a master's degree in business administration and a bachelor's degree in mass communications. I'm a certified life coach and certified women's wellness advocate. I administer the leadership chess test assessment and teach mindfulness to support personal and organizational development. Over the past two decades, I have been leading communications campaigns for billion dollar high profile projects for both the public and private sector organizations. And now my mission, my mission is to build a community of women who are empowered to manifest wellness, sustain business and professional experiences that support their vitality and uh, promote conductivity. My vision is that women will manifest wellness in themselves and gain energy and vitality to transform their lives from the inside out to their homes, to their businesses, and to the broader community. What is your professional mission statement? 
And furthermore, what is your family mission statement? While mindfulness is helpful in focusing your attention in a neutral and accepting fashion as a leader, you will constantly find yourself having to decide what to focus on. Understanding the goals and values of your company and your shared mission is a step towards pri prioritizing your focus. Familiarizing yourself with the company mission can help. So let's move on to the next slide. I'm gonna take a pause from sharing really quickly, just so that I'm sure that everyone can. Hello, Miss Nisa. Um, I just wanna check in with someone just to make sure, can you see me and can you see my screen and hear me? You can come off mute. Okay, that's great, that's great. I understand why now on these webinars, people are always like, can you see me? Cause it's like, you're just talking to a screen. Whereas with the podcast, it's like, I'm sitting there looking right at my guests and I'm like, okay, are they still there? Let me check in. <laughs> So I'm glad everyone's still here. The energy's high and we will keep going. Let's go. Okay, so these are a few scholars in the field of mindfulness. Um, Thich Nhat Hanh was from the East. Um, he is one that I had studied um, thanks to my sister Zarina who shared with me the book about mindful communication. Um, and ever since then, it, it kind of furthered my journey. Um, we also explored Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now years and years ago, but um, this philosophy is bringing us full circle to what our grandparents and ancestors know <laughs> before we got consumed with technology and being indoors more. So walk as if you are kissing the earth with your feet. I love going on walks. If you want to conquer the anxiety of life, live in the moment. That's the practice of mindfulness. Live in the breath. And James Barrett says, mindfulness is simply being aware of what is happening right now without wishing it were different. Enjoying the pleasant without holding on when it changes and being with the unpleasant without fearing, it will always be this way. And this reminds me of something that I learned in my womb wellness class. We were talking about how uh, there's seasons. There's seasons in the environment. We know that spring, winter, summer, fall. There's also seasons that women experience in their bodies um, and they say when you're having your cycle, that is a season of winter. So during certain seasons, you're supposed to be preparing yourself for the next season or experiencing that season as if it will not necessarily last. So you're enjoying that season and taking it for what it is. If you have a season where you need to rest, uh, like in the winter, or if you're experiencing loss, you give yourself that time and experience that fully without judging it. And you also will um, have a cer certain sense of knowing. One of the things that I learned uh, that was so powerful was that um, our experience in the next season is based on what we do in this season. So sometimes we toil so long worrying about what happened in the past, it makes us fearful. It makes us so fearful to move forward. And I've had these experiences too, where it's like, I did something that I wasn't happy with. And I'm like, you know, am I a bad decision maker? Can I trust myself? We, 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 we judge ourselves based on one experience and not knowing whether that experience can be a great lesson to move us forward. But uh, just allow yourself to be in the season that you're in and allow yourself to move forward. This is one of the things that coaches like myself do to help people to get unstuck. I know everyone has been stuck at some point in their lives. Um, I have been stuck and being stuck is okay because that's the winner of your life, you know? But you don't wanna be there forever. You wanna to get to the summer 
and you want to come out, um, mindfulness does help with that and having a coach who is uh, skilled in mindfulness and emotional intelligence. So a little bit more about mindfulness. This is so, so amazing to me. <laughs> oh, okay. Mindset geek, I guess you would say, but mindfulness is a way that you actually exercise your brain. Um, you know, we exercise in the gym, people lift weights and get on the treadmill and do all those things. That's exercising your body, but your mind is also a muscle that has something called neuroplasticity and our minds through the practice of mindfulness, through just Focusing on the moment and doing things like meditation um, and the breathing practices, affirmations that we will share today. Um, some of those things. And like we said, it can you can do it for 20 minutes a day. You can do it 10 or five minutes a day, whatever uh, works for you. But as you practice it, then it becomes second nature and you're no longer practicing it just becomes you. It is who you are. Um, and, and my favorite thought is, you know, it's not when you're doing the thing that you're really doing the thing. And I know that's abstract, but what I mean is the preparation that you put before is the meditation, the visualization, the gratitude, all that that you do before, you know, your marathon or your big business meeting, that is the work. That's the real work. Um, that's being a warrior versus um, a warrior. So, um, you know, if you look at the screen here, it talks about internal chatter. Uh, they coined it as the monkey mind. And I don't want to say they, but circumstances want to keep us in a state of the monkey mind we, where we have constant chatter and distraction, where we can't focus on our vision and our mission and our values. We're like monkeys going from branch to branch, you know, getting every leaf or thing that falls down. But we have been given a higher sense of ability, and that is to train our minds. And it's something that you can learn from a very young child. It's a powerful thing. So, you know, like it says above, it's tempting to blame all things that are going on in your outer world, but train your mind to focus on what's happening inside. Mental chatter can be helpful for working out problems, for analysis, or even at play. However, constant mental chatter can also distract us from things that are most important. And often it can mislead us into misunderstanding a given moment. Meditation is an exercise to cultivate and quiet the monkey mind. And I like to say again, the warrior mind versus the worrier mind. We don't wanna be worriers, we wanna be warriors. We wanna be high level observers of the circumstances. That way we can um, see a resolution. But if we're not high level observers, we're like caught in the problem. That's a leadership skill. That's your executive leadership skill. You're able to observe things from a high level so that you can affect change in a more positive and lasting way. Okay, so we're going to move on. Mindfulness. We went over this a little bit. You're open, you're curious, you're like, how can this benefit me? You're not um, afraid of new things. Okay, so now we can move on. Mindfulness is a form of mental resilience. 